so what we really discovered was that Pluto really never was the planet we wanted it to be. Renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson is no stranger to cosmic wonders. But recently declassified images of Pluto have left him utterly stunned. Once deemed just a cold speck in our solar system, these revealing photos have introduced a new chapter in our understanding of the distant dwarf planet. We, uh, at the American Museum of Natural History, when we redid our exhibits, we said Pluto belongs here, not there. Join us as we delve into what has caused such a stir in the scientific community. The initial discovery. In the vast expanse of our solar system, Far beyond the gas giants, a hidden secret lay waiting. The story of its discovery begins not in the year it was found, but decades earlier with a curious and ambitious individual named Percival Lowell. Percival wasn't just any man, he was a wealthy businessman with a penchant for gazing up at the stars. His fascination wasn't driven by wealth or fame, but by an insatiable curiosity about the universe. In 1894, fueled by this passion, he founded the Lowell Observatory, but Mars wasn't the only cosmic mystery that captured his attention. He was convinced that there was another, yet undiscovered planet out there. He named this hypothetical planet, Planet X. His belief stemmed from something unusual he noticed. The orbits of the known planets, Uranus and Neptune, seemed a bit off. Something was tugging at them, altering their paths ever so slightly. Could there be another celestial body out there, exerting its gravitational pull on them? Driven by this theory, Lowell spent over a decade, his eyes glued to his telescope, searching for this elusive planet X in the night sky. Yet the universe kept its secret, and in 1916, Lowell passed away, leaving the mystery unsolved. But the story doesn't end there. Though Lowell was gone, his observatory continued its mission. There was a hiccup, though. A legal battle over Lowell's will erupted, putting the quest for planet X on hold. However, as the pages of the calendar flipped to 1929, the observatory's director, Vesto Slifer, decided it was time to pick up where Lowell left off. Enter Clyde Tombaugh, a 22-year-old with dreams as vast as the night sky. This young man from Kansas might have grown up on a farm, but his heart was always with the stars. He had even crafted his own telescopes to bring the cosmos a little closer. Recognizing his passion and potential, Slifer handed Tombaugh a monumental task continue the hunt for Planet X. Armed with a state-of-the-art 13-inch telescope, Tombaugh embarked on this cosmic treasure hunt. He photographed the skies, comparing stars, and looking for any tiny shifts that might hint at a planet's movement. And then in 1930, the breakthrough. In the deep sea of stars, Tombaugh spotted an unfamiliar speck of light, Pluto. It wasn't exactly where Lowell predicted, but it was a new world nonetheless. The young farm boy had done it, he had discovered the solar system's hidden gem. Blink comparison. In the grand hunt for the elusive Planet X, Clyde Tombaugh had an ingenious approach up his sleeve. Instead of simply gazing up at the stars, he took it a step further, diving deep into the art and science of observation with a method known as blink comparison. Blink comparison wasn't just any method. Tombaugh would take two photographs of the same patch of sky, but several days apart. Then, with the aid of a fascinating device called the Blink Comparator, he'd flip between the two photos rapidly. The stars, being so far away, would appear frozen, unchanged from one image to the next. But a planet, even one as distant as Pluto, would betray its presence by shifting its position ever so slightly. Tombaugh's eyes would dart from one star to another, looking for that one tiny blip that dared to move. It was painstaking, meticulous work, requiring an immense amount of patience and concentration. And then, on one fateful day, February 18, 1930, amidst the vast canvas of stars, Tombaugh noticed something. A minuscule point of light had moved between two photos taken in January. Eureka! Could this be the mysterious Planet X everyone had been searching for? To ensure he wasn't mistaken, Tombaugh scoured through other plates from different dates. Every time, that tiny dot of light shifted, confirming it was, in fact, a moving celestial body. Excitedly, Tombaugh shared his findings with Slipher. There was a palpable energy in the air. Was this the moment they had been waiting for? Other astronomers weighed in, cross-checking, and confirming. Yes, 
Tombaugh had indeed unveiled the hidden world lurking in the outskirts of our solar system. And what better date to announce this monumental discovery to the world than March 13, 1930? Not only was it the birthday of Percival Lowell, the man who had ignited the search for Planet X, but it also commemorated William Herschel's discovery of Uranus. It was a day of double celebration, a nod to past explorations, and a salute to the new frontier that had just been uncovered. The Name At the heart of Pluto's naming story is an 11-year-old girl named Venetia Burney. Living in England and with a keen interest in myths and legends, she had learned about the ancient tales of gods and their powers. When she heard about the discovery of the new planet, a name from those legends popped into her head. Pluto, the Roman god of the underworld, known for his ability to become invisible at will. Now, most kids might have just shared this idea with friends or written it in a journal, but not Venetia. She told her grandfather, Falconer Madden, Madan wasn't just any grandfather, he had connections. As a former librarian at the renowned Oxford University, he had friends in high places, one of whom was Herbert Hall Turner, an astronomer. Without wasting time, Madden shared Venetia's suggestion with Turner. The idea resonated deeply with the folks at the Lowell Observatory. Firstly, Pluto's character as a god echoed the mystery and allure of the newly discovered celestial body. Furthermore, the name had a special connection to Percival Lowell, the observatory's founder. The initials P and L in Pluto match those of Percival Lowell. Lastly, the term Plutoid was used to describe certain faint celestial objects, adding another layer of aptness to the name. On May 1, 1930, the decision was sealed and the name Pluto was officially bestowed upon the distant planet. For over 70 years, Pluto proudly stood as the ninth member of our solar system's planetary family. Children memorized its place in textbooks, and it became a staple in many a stargazer's list. But the universe in all its vastness is ever-evolving, and so is our understanding of it. The Dwarf Planet In 2006, the International Astronomical Union introduced a fresh perspective on what constitutes a planet. They laid down three clear criteria. It should orbit the sun, have enough mass to form a nearly round shape, and it should have cleared its neighborhood of other floating space debris. While Pluto confidently checked the first two boxes, it faltered on the third. Sharing its space with a multitude of icy objects in the Kuiper Belt, a region beyond Neptune, Pluto could not claim sole dominion over its orbital realm. Given this revelation, Pluto was lovingly rebranded as a dwarf planet, joining the ranks of Ceres, Eris, Haumea, and Make Make. Even though it might not have the size of Jupiter or the rings of Saturn, Pluto boasts a charm that's truly its own, especially as the most renowned among the dwarf planets. These celestial bodies are unique. They sit somewhere between the might of the major planets and the smaller stature of asteroids. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a star scientist and the big boss of New York's Hayden Planetarium, had a lot to say about Pluto. He's the guy who played a big role in calling Pluto a dwarf planet instead of just a planet in 2006. Yep, he's the reason Pluto got its title changed. He even wrote a book and did a show about it named The Pluto Files. And guess what? Some young fans of Pluto, like third graders, were not happy. They even sent him letters about it. The Moons Now you might wonder what makes Pluto stand out. Firstly, there's its intriguing orbit. Instead of tracing a near-perfect circle around the sun like a neatly drawn loop, Pluto's path is more of an elongated oval. This eccentricity in its orbit leads to some cosmic ballet every 248 years. For about 20 years in that cycle, Pluto playfully dances closer to the Sun than Neptune, its neighboring planet. The most recent of these orbital swaps happened between 1979 and 1999. Orbiting this mesmerizing dwarf planet are five moons, each with its own unique story. At the forefront of this lunar ensemble is Charon, often thought of as Pluto's twin. With a span stretching roughly 750 miles across, Charon is no small sidekick. It's half the size of Pluto. Now the bond between Charon and Pluto is deeper than most. They're tidally locked, a cosmic dance where the two always keep the same face towards each other. It's as if they're continuously staring into each other's eyes. Due to their closeness in size and proximity, some even dub them a double planet system. But Charon isn't Pluto's only companion. Farther out, four smaller moons twirl around the dwarf planet. Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx discovered by the ever-watchful eye of the Hubble Space Telescope. 
These moons are intriguing in their own right. They have an almost whimsical, irregular form, each carving its distinct path around Pluto. The surface. Now, shifting our gaze from the skies to Pluto itself, we find a world that's equally captivating. A landscape blanketed in a frosty mix of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide ices awaits. Depending on its distance from the sun, these ices undergo a cosmic dance, freezing and thawing, giving Pluto's surface a dynamic feel. And while it's chilly out there, with temperatures plummeting between minus 375 and minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the scenery is spectacular. Journeying across Pluto's icy terrain, one might also encounter the dragon-scaled ridges of Tartarus Dorsa, or marvel at the towering ice mountains of Norgay Montes, reminiscent of our very own Rockies. There's also a site that might leave you scratching your head in wonder, Wright Mons, a structure that hints at being an ice volcano crowned with a gaping hole, the atmosphere. This celestial wonder doesn't just shine because of its icy surface, it's also adorned with a delicate, gossamer-like atmosphere. This shroud consists primarily of nitrogen, with hints of methane and carbon monoxide playing supporting roles. But Pluto's atmosphere isn't static. It's akin to a living, breathing entity. As Pluto dances closer to the sun, this atmosphere expands, awakening from its slumber. Yet when our distant planet retreats into the colder outskirts, some of its atmosphere ventures into space, almost like it's exhaling, now, if you could see it up close, this atmospheric blanket isn't just clear and invisible. It paints the sky with a hue of gentle blue, creating layers upon layers of misty haze. These layers play with the sunlight, scattering it, adding to Pluto's otherworldly charm. However, don't be fooled by its ethereal appearance. The atmospheric pressure on Pluto is minuscule, almost 100,000 times fainter than what we experience here on Earth. But this sparse atmosphere doesn't lack dynamism. It whispers tales of winds that sweep across the icy plains and clouds that form and drift. Snowfalls grace Pluto's surface, and if conditions are just right, one might even witness the celestial beauty of a rainbow arching across its blue-tinted skies. Peeling back the layers of time, Pluto's origin story is as fascinating as its present. It's believed that around 4.5 billion years ago, in the cold reaches of the Kuiper Belt, a monumental cosmic event took place. A collision, grand in scale, birthed this enigmatic world, and the saga didn't stop there. Another celestial collision in its early chapters might have given rise to Charon, its significant moon. The aftermath of this event, a swirling disk of debris that over time coalesced and introduced the other moons to Pluto's family, Sputnik Planitia. And within Pluto, Sputnik Planitia stands out like a luminous gem, a testament to nature's marvels. Sputnik Planitia isn't just any region on Pluto, it forms the western half of the iconic, heart-shaped feature named Tombaugh Regio, a tribute to Clyde Tombaugh, the diligent American astronomer who introduced Pluto to our world in 1930. While the eastern section of this heart is the rugged Cthulhu Macula, clad in deep shadows of methane ice, the western section gleams with a serene brightness. This dazzling expanse, stretching across approximately 1,050 by 800 kilometers, is the enchanting realm of Sputnik Planitia, blanketed in a soft layer of nitrogen ice. Now, there's a captivating dance in space between Pluto and its most significant moon, Charon. These two celestial partners have eyes only for each other, forever showing the same face to one another as they gracefully dance around a point in space and in this celestial waltz, Sputnik Planitia is located directly opposite Charon, like a spotlight shining away from its audience. In 2015, our understanding of Pluto transformed dramatically. NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, on a historic flyby, provided us with our first up-close glimpse of this distant world, capturing breathtaking images and invaluable data. Among its many findings, the clear view of Sputnik Planitia stood out, capturing our collective imaginations. The naming of this region is a nod to human progress in space exploration. Sputnik pays homage to Sputnik 1, the pioneering satellite that heralded the space age with its launch by the Soviet Union in 1957. Meanwhile, Planitia harks back to ancient times with its Latin origin, encapsulating the idea of planes or vast flat surfaces. Across this sprawling icy stage, you can observe intricate patterns of polygonal shapes with each polygon being nearly 33 kilometers wide. But what crafts these elaborate patterns? It's a dance of ice, not as we know it, 
but in a way that's uniquely Plutonian. This ballet is choreographed by convection, a natural heat transfer process. To understand convection on Pluto, let's delve into the world of its nitrogen ice. Though it sounds counterintuitive, on this frigid dwarf planet, solid nitrogen ice moves almost like a thick, slow honey, thanks to Pluto's nose-nipping temperatures, which dip to a shivery minus 230 degrees Celsius. The warmth beneath the icy blanket of Sputnik Planitia comes from Pluto's very heart. Deep inside, its rocky core gives off heat, a legacy of radioactive elements breaking down over time. This warmth urges the nitrogen to rise. At the same time, atop this icy domain, a magical transformation takes place. When sunlight brushes against the nitrogen ice, it skips a step and turns directly into gas, a process we call sublimation. This not only chills the surface, forming a cool, dense layer, but also sets in motion gentle breezes of nitrogen gas. Polygonal cells. One of its standout features is the deep troughs that weave their way between the unique polygonal cells. Think of these troughs as the seams between patches on a quilt. However, unlike fabric seams, these troughs owe their existence to an enchanting process known as sublimation. When the nitrogen ice on Pluto moves, sometimes a little shuffling and jostling create tiny cracks. These cracks play peekaboo with the sunlight, allowing it to touch and transform the ice directly into gas. Over time, this continuous game results in these troughs deepening and widening, like a brook carving its way through a valley. What's more, within these troughs, one can spot the occasional blocky hill or mountain. They stand out almost like stalwarts, possibly having risen due to the push and pull of forces beneath or perhaps due to winds and erosions decorating the area with deposits from distant lands. The land here tells tales of nature's power, where even the seemingly solid ice is always in motion. Then there are the pits of Sputnik Planitia, not just simple dents in the ground, these are magical bowls formed again by the delicate dance of sublimation. In areas where the icy dance is slower, with fewer cracks, the sublimation is more even. This gives rise to these dreamy pits, which grow gracefully with time, each a testament to the age and speed of the underlying convective process. Recent studies have hinted at an interesting story. These cells shuffle around at about 13.8 centimeters each year suggesting that the icy canvas we see has been painting its story for around 180,000 years. What truly adds to the allure of Sputnik Planitia is its puzzling address on Pluto. Nestled at 25 degrees north latitude, it's not where you'd expect the coldest point of Pluto to be. Logic and models would point fingers to regions around 30 degrees, both north and south, as places getting the least sunshine over Pluto's long journey around the sun but nature, in its enigmatic way, placed Sputnik Planitia slightly off-center. Some wonder if it originally formed in one of the colder spots and then, feeling adventurous, shifted to its present locale, lured by its own massive weight and pull. As we mentioned before, some believe that long ago, a rogue traveler from the Kuiper Belt, a distant realm teeming with icy wanderers, struck Pluto, creating what we now recognize as Sputnik Planitia. This wasn't just a regular bump it left behind a massive basin as a mark of the colossal event. After the encounter, there were cascades of effects. Imagine the searing heat of the collision melting a portion of Pluto's icy heart, giving rise to a hidden ocean beneath the surface. And in Pluto's version of this tale, methane plays the leading role. Found aplenty on Pluto's surface, and in its atmosphere, this methane could have been a gift from the depths of Pluto itself perhaps stirred to life by the warmth beneath, or even some mysterious processes we're yet to understand fully. But here's the curious part. The aftermath of this colossal crash left Sputnik Planitia somewhat heavier than its surroundings. It shifted, positioning itself to forever face Karen. But in doing so, it didn't journey alone. It tugged at Pluto's crust and mantle, urging them to move with it. This grand relocation could be why some of Pluto's mountains and valleys seem out of place not quite lining up as we'd expect. This shift wasn't just a gentle meander. It caused Pluto's surface to twist and turn, leading to cracks and crevices. Some of these splits in the land might have been gateways, letting out precious water or fluids from the hidden ocean beneath. This resulted in incredible sights like the spiky bladed terrains and possibly even cryovolcanoes, where icy material erupts instead of molten lava. Norge Montes, Pluto, 
despite its distance and diminutive size, boasts breathtaking landscapes that could rival any planet in our solar system. One of its crown jewels is its majestic mountain ranges. Among these towering peaks is Norge Montes, a spectacular range of ice mountains that stretch skyward, rivaling the grandeur of our very own Rockies. Positioned near Pluto's equator, these icy sentinels are part of an expansive belt of mountains that seem to give Sputnik Planitia a protective embrace. But what makes these peaks truly intriguing is what they're made of. Instead of the rocky foundations we're familiar with on Earth, Pluto's mountains are chiseled from water ice and frozen methane. It's a testament to Pluto's chillingly cold environment that substances like water and methane, which would be liquid or gaseous on Earth, stand tall and solid here, forming these impressive highlands. Beyond its rugged terrain, Pluto has another surprise in store, a delicate atmosphere, composed primarily of nitrogen. With hints of methane and carbon monoxide, this gossamer veil undergoes dramatic transformations. When Pluto swings closer to the Sun on its long orbit, its atmosphere puffs up, expanding in size. But as it retreats from the Sun's warmth, parts of this atmosphere bid Pluto farewell, drifting off into the cosmos. However, the real spectacle comes when you see this atmosphere in just the right light. When the sun's rays pierce through, they scatter, giving the atmosphere a dreamy blue tint. Capturing this beauty, the New Horizons spacecraft snapped a captivating view of Pluto's atmosphere, illuminated from behind by the sun, after its historic flyby on July 14, 2015. Some people thought Neil might change his mind after seeing these, but nope. Neil stuck to his guns. He said Pluto didn't check all the boxes to be called a full-fledged planet. One reason? It's one of many icy objects hanging out in a space zone called the Kuiper Belt. Uh, at the American Museum of Natural History, when we redid our exhibits, we said Pluto belongs here, not there, with its other icy brethren in the outer solar system. Okay, you took a lot of heat for that. Yeah! Why not enjoy learning about all the incredible things in our solar system? He thinks we should be excited about understanding space based on what's out there, like rings, ice, and maybe even life, rather than just memorizing names. After all, there's a whole universe to explore. What are your thoughts about it? Let us know in the comments. See you in the next one.